Igo P. Kaizen, nice to see you. Good to be here. It's been a while. I know you're in Connecticut and I'm in Connecticut. <laughs> Just We're so busy we cannot meet uh, in person in any case. Uh, how are things in Denver going? Things are going quite well. Concerts are stopping and starting, but starting more often than they're stopping. So yeah, otherwise things are going very well. Uh, you are the professor of a violin there in uh, the Denver University? The University that? of Denver, yes, as of 2019. Yeah, it's Between wonderful. Year. And uh, tell me about your family. Well, my family, uh, of course, consists of musicians going back many, many generations. Yeah. And I guess the one I should obviously talk about is my grandfather, Victor Pikaisen, who was yeah. um, a student of Oyster and won every competition under the sun and really is not just for me, one of the great violinists of the 20th century. So, um, yeah, I took my first lessons from him and I still have the chance to play for him whenever I'm working on anything. It's wonderful. And uh, you, you keep the Russian tradition of the great violinists. Thank you. It's Hopefully. Incredible. Yeah. And, and that's why I asked you the Shostakovich concerto, of course, uh, you'd be the best person to play this piece. And uh, I know you performed this piece before, but I'm really looking forward to um, performing with you. Finally, Finally yeah, <laughs> like this for last year's season, but couldn't do it because of a pandemic. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about the piece and your feeling about it? You well, you know, it's I'm, I'm also really looking forward to, to, you know, doing it with you. And it's such a tremendous work, both for violin and for the orchestra, because the orchestra has such an incredible part. And uh, I remember the first time I heard it, you know, e even before I ever played this piece, Actually, my grandfather was telling me a great story about it. Uh, he was having a lesson with Oyster, and this is in 1947. Mm. And he bumped into Shostakovich, who was leaving Oyster's apartment at the same time. And Oyster told him, you know, Dmitry Dmitrievich just wrote an incredible concerto for violin, and he saw the manuscript. And this is in 1947. And um, it was the same week that, you know, the anti-Jewish decree came out. Mm. That was... Uh, a very, very difficult time um, in, in, in Russia. And the concerto has a very famous, very blatant, brazen Jewish theme in the second movement. Da, 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 da. And um, of course, when it came out, it, it wasn't premiered until many, many years later, until 1955. So it was put on the shelf, but he remembers you know, that meeting and seeing you know, it's still in ink. Um, and wow. then it was put away, and then he was there for the first performance. And mm -hmm. it was something else when uh, Oyster and Raminsky played it together. So, of course, I grew up hearing that story, and it's also a concerto that you always want to play as a violinist. Mm -hmm. And hopefully you grow with it. But um, such a heavy yet very moving piece, like like also Stakovich, of course. I mean, it's so virtuosic, you know, I mean, the, like... Uh last move and i know I, I don't know how violinists could manage that you know it's incredible it's also because it follows the cadenza and it's really one of those pieces that i usually don't get tired when i play but it's even physically exhausting uh, i can imagine and, you know yeah. you know the, the fourth movement was you were supposed to go straight into the uh last movement after the cadenza and yeah also himself who premiered it told just coverage that you know i need a break because your hand is falling off after this cadenza. <laughs> it's really physically yeah. challenging as well as emotionally draining yeah. It's uh, it's kind of dark piece, you know. This, but uh, full of energy and uh, a lot of messages in there. And uh, you know, uh, I'm really looking forward to that. And uh, we have a great orchestra to play with, so which is good. And uh, uh, so, tell me about your private life. You're married to a wonderful violist. Yes. And do you have a new child? Yes, we have a one-year-old who keeps me very busy and very, very happy, but uh, <laughs> makes me get up much earlier than I would like. Yeah, but your life changes. She likes music. She likes music and she loves it when I practice. Of course, she tries to <laughs> do it herself, Good. but I can practice around her, which, which is certainly a help. Your, your wife, Ezgi, is from um, uh, you know Turkey. And which you and I have a really great uh, affinity about the country and everything. Yes, we both love it. Actually, as a matter of fact, ironically, we met for the first time in person in Ankara. I mean, of course, I knew who you were, and I was at Yale. Yeah. We, ne we never, we actually met when you were both playing different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In Ankara, you were conducting the Presidential Symphony, I think. That's I right. Yeah. I was playing with the Bashkent with the Capital Chamber Orchestra. That's right. Yeah. yeah, that was the time. I remember meeting in Radisson there. <laughs> yes, exactly. We met for a coffee. <laughs> yeah, it's been a while actually, and yeah. then we did a Tchaikovsky together with my other orchestra, 
No, the Shostakovich in the. So they're going through the Russian repertoire. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're expert over that. Of course, someday we we do something else. Of course. Yeah, but I'm happy to do it. It's really we'll, we'll cover all the Russian repertoire first, right? <laughs> yeah, we still have Prokofiev and Glazunov. And... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, well, uh, did anything would you like to say to our audience? Well, I, I'm really, I'm, I'm sure it's a message that uh, has been delivered already, but. I think as musicians, the thing we miss most about this last 18 months now is playing for live people. And we are very lucky to have Skype and Zoom and FaceTime to do something. But for me, it's there's nothing like being in the same hall um, with, with a live audience. So I'm really, really looking forward. Um, and I, I do mean it sincerely to share this with them, to be on stage you know, with a live orchestra. And there is no substitute for it. So I hope to see many of them. I know that everybody's taking all the precautions and that's great, but it's it's wonderful to be in the same space again and there's nothing like it. So I really look forward to, to seeing them in, uh, in January. All right, very well said, thank you so much.